Right, hi, my name is Arto. Today we're going to use a vector illustration as a basis for an animation in After Effects. Um, we're going to utilize an inverse kinematic skeleton for our animation and we're going to our export our animation as SVG for use in, in web context instead of a video. Uh, first of all, we need to divide our layers because we are going to work with, with a skeleton rig, which means that um, each of our body parts, so to speak, needs to go to its specific designated place on the skeleton. We can't just export this entire arm as one shape, that won't work. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that each body part, each shape we want to animate, needs to be nice and round on the, the ends. Because, let me show you, if we don't do that, for instance, if we make this thing very square, and we layer it on top of each other. You can imagine that if you um, rotate this during the animation, in some positions we will see edges, which is obviously not what we want. So, because we're only going to move, or animate rather, the arm and the finger uh, of this character and nothing else, we need to layer the upper arm on its own layer, the lower arm. The hand and the mouse are uh, one layer because, well, for this specific animation we're not going to let go of the mouse, we're just gonna move it around and click it. And because we're gonna click it, the finger needs to be its own layer as well. Um, just for the sake of it, I also separated the body, head and table, but that's not really necessary. Um, as long as the arm is on top of all these, then it would work. All right. So, for it to work in, um, in After Effects, we just need to export this, no, not export, save as a normal Illustrator file. I already did that, but I'll do it again. Alright, just standard settings is alright. And then, when we go to After Effects, I should have loaded this up before the video. Right here in After Effects, you will see um, yeah, you will see two windows you normally don't have. Uh, these are Body Move-In and Duik. Um, links for the downloads and guides on how to install those will be in the description of this video. Um, Duik we won't worry about right now, but we will use it after we finished animating um, Body Move-In. I mean, Duik. However, we are going to use in a moment. Now, first and foremost, we need to import our uh, Illustrator file, like so. Um, we are met with this dialog box, we just choose Composition as Import Coin, and as Footage Dimensions, we choose our layer size. Alright, then we have a map here with all our layers from the Illustrator file and a composition containing all those layers. We're just gonna work in this composition. All right. Now, in order to start animating, we need to link up our uh, arm, which is the part we want to animate, to a skeleton. Um, now, Dewick is very, very, very easy for that because you can just click on a preset and it will provide you with a skeleton you can use. Now, if you don't use Dewick, you need to use the pin tool and lots of expressions in order to make it work as good as Dewick does. But since we have Dewick, we're just gonna use it. We click um, the arm skeleton because that's what we're going to animate. And then we line up this weird looking thing we get with the part we want to animate, in this case, the arm. All right, now this is very sloppily done. Normally, you would like to, uh, you would want to line this out as precisely as you can in the middle of the the rounded end of your, uh, like imagine this as a circle, like the, the exact middle point of this circle is where this point should be. Um, on more complex animations than this, I would um, use guide points that I've placed there in Illustrator on a different uh, layer, so, so I can hide them later, but 
for an illustration as simple as this, that's not really necessary. Come on. All right, there we go. Just line this up as good as you can. It will be fine. All right. When it's when it's nice and lined up, we need to um, make a controller because right now um, it's not really different from using any pins. You can use the uh, you can you can move the hand but it will only move in relation to the elbow, which is exactly the same as using puppet pins. But when we um, select all those uh, structure layers, like note there is an S in front of them, that's a prefix for structure, and we auto-rig those layers, here we could uh, do some magic again and create this little controller. Now, with this controller, it won't um, move in relation to the elbow anymore but the entire arm will know it is an arm and move as an actual arm like it will only move in relation to the shoulder and everything will stay in its place which is very cool all right you noted that the arm of our illustration did not move with the skeleton that is because we haven't linked those to the structure layers yet but before we do that um, we need to make shape layers out of these because these are illustrator layers and you'd think well those are vectors so there is no problem but there is um, after effects handles those layers as pngs and if you're going to export this um, you will get pngs as well which is not what we want we want to export this as an svg so we want um, vector just right click create create shapes from vector layer. There we go. Um, it automatically hides all the uh, illustrator layers, so that's very handy. Now, we can also hide the structure layers because we won't need those anymore now we have our controller. But what we do need to do is link up the shape layers we created from our illustrator layers to the appropriate structure layers. So our upper arm is the arm, our lower arm is the forearm, hand and mouse is the hand, and that's it actually. I'm not going to lay out, um, sorry, I'm not going to link the finger with the skeleton yet. That has a reason that I will show you later. So now they are all linked. Our arm should move correctly, kinda. See, like if you stretch it, of course, it's not going to be um, correct, but since that's out of, outside of the scope of our animation, um, we won't worry about that. I did notice, however, that there is a bit of an issue with um, how I laid out the structure layer. So I'm going to redo that a little bit. Um, it's a lower arm. That's the problem, so we're just going to readjust this shape to where it fits correctly. There we go. Now, normally if we hide this again and we move... Oh, not that. And we move the uh, controller, that should be a bit better. Okay. Now, the hand is also incorrect. You know, it, it takes a bit of fine-tuning sometimes. Um, this is why these guide points are normally a good idea. I just didn't do that. That's better. All right, that should be good. Yeah, that's that look, that's looking good. All right, now why didn't I rig the finger to the skeleton? Because I want to show that you don't need the skeleton for everything. Like. Um, if the main part is rigged up, then you can just parent or link rather elements to the rigged up um, layers and it will still work. So if we um, link the finger to the hand and then make sure that the anchor point is where the um, is where the joint should be, more or less there, then we can perfectly 
use the uh, controller to also move the finger around. That's the power of inverse kinematic animation. All right, I'm going to animate this and I will cut to when the animation is done. All right, so I finished the animation. Um, I changed a few things though. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that I changed the background to white. Uh, this just fitted the animation better and it's, it was also white in the Illustrator file, so I did that, but as yeah, if, if we're gonna render it out to SVG, it's not gonna matter anyway because it will be transparent in the end result. Uh, second thing I did was delete all the hidden Illustrator layers. Um, they weren't used anymore, they were just clutter, and there is another reason that I'll show you in a minute, but um, let me show you the animation first. It just moves the mouse around, clicks a few times, double clicks, click drag. Uh, it's a nice loop in order um, to just sit on a website and look pretty without any interaction or stutters or anything like that. All right, so if we're gonna render this out, first thing, when you open Body Moving for the first time, um, chances are you're not gonna see anything in this list. Just click refresh or click inside of the search box and your compositions will appear. Then just select the composition what you want to render out. Go to settings. By default, only glyphs will be selected, but seeing as we don't have any text in this animation, we can uncheck that. But we need to check hidden and guides. Um, we need to check hidden because obviously we want hidden layers to be exported because we have uh, these hidden structure layers that are critical for our animation. Um, this is also why I deleted all the unused hidden layers because while I'm not really sure, I think if you check this, it will also export all these hidden layers as SVG objects, even though they're not visible. So in order to um, create a smaller SVG uh, in terms of uh, memory size, just delete all the hidden layers you're not using. And then uh, select, guided, uh, select guides here, because we want guided layers to be exported as well. Obviously the uh, body parts we have on our character that are linked to the skeleton, uh, which in turn are linked to the controller, are guided layers, so we need those as well. Click save, select the destination. Um, you'll see here it exports a, um, a data.json, uh, a JSON file. Not an SVG, not an HTML. This is because um, on its own, we're not really gonna be able to do anything with this JSON file. It just contains all the information about our uh, animation. And this information will be read by a player. Uh, I'm gonna show you what that is in a second, but first we're just gonna render this out. So click render, wait a few seconds or minutes if you have a longer animation. Uh, click done, and if you want, you can go to preview, current renders, select the composition you just rendered out and scrub through this timeline in order to see your animation. Um, there are a few things that can go wrong here. I've experienced some uh, issues here with layers turning inside out, colors not showing up, uh, paths not ending up correctly. Um, most of the time that is because of gradients. If you have colored gradients uh, within your shapes, then body moving is gonna do some weird stuff. Uh, there are ways to work around this, but um, because this image don't, doesn't have uh, gradients, I'm not gonna show that in this video. Um, Body moving just is weird with gradients. The developer said so themselves. They are going to fix it. There are ways to move around this at the moment, but seeing as it is a hassle, I just didn't do this in this animation. All right, so it's rendered out. We have our JSON file, but we're not, be, we're not gonna be able to do anything with the JSON file until we get the player. Uh, the body moving player is called lottie.js. It's a library, uh, a JavaScript library made by, um, uh, Airbnb, of course, like body moving itself. Um, and well, it's gonna read our JSON file and output an SVG. So we save that and then we can go to the coding part. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio Code, my favorite IDE. Um, I made a workspace within the folder that contains our data.json and uh, the JavaScript library we're going to use. Um, the character.ai file is also in here, but we're not gonna use that, don't uh, worry about that. First thing we need to do is um, create an HTML file, index.html, there we go. Then just uh, make it a bare bones, empty HTML document with uh, title, character, animation if you want to. 
Um, then we need to link the JavaScript library. Script source is multi.js. Uh, and then we need to link uh, our own JavaScript file, which we are going to create in a second. Let's call this index.html, no, obviously. All right, and then lastly, we need to create an, um, a container for the animation to sit in. So we're going to create a div element with an ID of container. There we go. That's it for the HTML. Then we need to create um, the index.js file. And within this uh, uh, JavaScript file, we are going to specify some parameters for body moving to work with uh, our library. All right, first, create a variable called animation, which is uh, like this. So now we um, we tell body moving to load an animation with these parameters. Uh, the parameters we need to specify are which container it will use, which will be uh, the diff we made uh, a few seconds ago, with element by ID, got this diff container, there we go. Uh, the next parameter we need to specify is which renderer to use. This is because um, this library is not only uh, good for SVG, but can also handle other types of animations. And seeing as we uh, are going to use an SVG for this, we specify SVG. Then the next thing we need to do is specify if we want to if we want this animation to loop, uh, which yes, we do want this to loop. Um, and then we need to specify if we want it to play automatically, which uh, is also true. Uh, notice that. If you set these to false, you could very much um, uh, trigger these on, on uh, user interaction for uh, interfaces and stuff like that, uh, which is very, very handy and um, something body moving is very, very good at. Uh, but for now, we're just going to uh, do this simple loop for this simple animation. Uh, and lastly, we need to specify the path to the JSON file, which is uh, data.json. All right, and that's it. If we save this and we run the uh, HTML file, we get a nice looping SVG animation. Um, obviously, because this is F SVG, it's not gonna um, it's not gonna get pixelated if you zoom in. But because I didn't specify a height and width on the container element, uh, zooming doesn't really do anything on this page right now. Not to worry, it is SVG, um, and just to show you that it really is, let's uh, take a look at the elements here. It is actually uh, an SVG transforming, not a uh, PNG. Alright, I hope this helped. Um, thank you for watching.